Pour yourself. Hi, happy Saturday. Happy Holy Saturday, everyone. Tomorrow's Easter. Today is Saturday, so let's have some fun. Okay, so what I'm going to be making for you today are cottontail coladas. Um, two ways. So we have cottontail coladas, which will be a pina, pina colada, and cottontail margaritas, which is what I will be drinking. Um, I actually found the recipe because I was looking up, trying to find um, a cocktail to make tonight because I was at my wit's end. So it was actually made with margaritas, so that's what I'm going to be doing, but I also want to demonstrate, hi Maureen, happy Saturday. I also want to demonstrate the rum because that would be more like a fun name to put out, even if it's just you and your family, Kenya, happy Cottontail coladas. Okay, so let's start off with probably one of the biggest issues everybody's going to have making these. If you don't have um, Coco Lopez, which is the standard preservative ridden uh, pina colada mix, um, if you don't have Coco Lopez, the next best, best thing is uh, canned coconut milk. Oh, sorry, coconut cream. And if you don't have coconut cream, the next best thing is um, sorry, coconut milk. I have it switched. That's right. So for my margaritas, I will be using the, and I'll put this all online so you can watch. Hi, John. Hi, Robin. Robin Drewer, not Robin's sister. Um, for the tequila, I'm going to suggest using coconut milk. Coconut milk is, is just like using regular milk when, when baking or mixing a drink. Your coconut milk is strictly the same thing. Coconut cream is going to be the consistency of heavy cream. Um, I'm actually gonna open this one up. Hi, Patricia Wyman. Hi, Patty Wyman. Sorry, I called her Patricia, that's her, her name, but of course she's her cousin, so we call her Patty. Hi, Pat. Um, coconut cream is the consistency of heavy cream. I'm actually going to open this up, even though from the other day when we had our recipe, I have leftover coconut milk. So I can put my coconut milk on the side and use this. So first of all, give it a little shake. Um, I have it, I actually wrote it two ways. So you have it, um, the measuring just for one cocktail, or you can make it if you're having a crowd, a crowd of four tomorrow, four or five, then simply um, go by and do the pitcher, go by that recipe. So for one pitcher, it calls for 14 ounces of coconut cream. I think personally, I think that's way too much. I would start with eight fluid ounces of the coconut cream, basically half the can, um, and start with that and see if it's enough coconut flavor for you. I'm sure it will be. Um, and if the consistency is, is not thick enough, add a little more. I tend to, when I like anything, even rum flavor, or margarita, anything colada, I like it less thick and less coconutty. So um, again, the recipe calls for 14 ounces, start with eight and add more if you have to. So we're only going to be doing um, one cocktail at a time because that's all I can muster. And if you have leftover, which you certainly should, if you're only using half the can and the can is about 14 ounces, hi Marion. Um, Put it in Tupperware or a glass drawer with a lid. Don't ever store it in the can. That's, that's a no-no. So what you do is just, let's see. I need a bigger pitcher. I'll use this for a second because we're gonna be using that anyway. So you see it's clumpy. So just give it a good mix because like I said, we just want half. And I'll show you why in a minute because we actually need some to do the glasses. So, all right. So let's start with the pina colada. So you, sorry, cottontail colada. All right, let's get our glasses done first. Take, I don't have a nice big spoon, but I'll use this. Take a spoonful of the cream. All right, and take your other plate. And believe it or not, I couldn't believe I had it, but I had two types of coconut. The coconut I used for the macaroons the other day was an unsweetened coconut, um, gluten-free, unsweetened. This is just a shredded coconut. Optimal 
leaf. <laughs> you would want to use the flakes. Um, this is shredded. If you have the flakes, then it's going to be a really cute presentation, but I don't, so this will be fine if you can see that. So we're going to take our clean glass. I've tried this before for outdoors with plastic. It just doesn't work the same. All right. So you dip it in the coconut cream. I don't know if the coconut milk will work, but we'll try it next. And then you dip it in the coconut. All right, let me push this on the side. All right, we don't want to get it in our way. So there's your cute glass for now. And we are going to take, once again, in our blender. I'm going to use the same thing just so I don't have to wash it. All right, so we want to take two ounces of the white rum. If you were doing this as a whole drink, a whole pitcher, you would do um, one and a half cups of the white rum. Okay, so two ounces of the white rum. All right, now because it's going to be a cottontail um, colada, we want it to be white. We don't want it to be dark. So most colada recipes call for a um, two ounces of white rum and one ounce of dark rum. We're just going to use our fun that I bought for... Jean, the white passion fruit Malibu, just to give it another flavor level. And that is gonna be your secondary liquor is usually always half of what your first is. So two ounces and one ounce. All right, a cup of ice. And let's see, let's do two ounces of our coconut milk. Oh, I don't have a shot glass, so I'm gonna to have to use my two ounces of the coconut milk had to use my mixing spoon so now I'll have to wash that out now um, again another issue with making this cocktail this weekend might be that people don't have pineapple juice I know I don't so I have fresh I have some fresh pineapple so first you know what just pour off if you've got it safe you can use pineapple juice and for that with the two ounces of rum, the one ounce of Malibu, and the ice, and the two ounces of coconut cream, then you would go two ounces of pineapple juice. So it's really easy. Two ounces of coconut milk, two ounces of rum, two ounces of pineapple juice, and one ounce of, of uh, Malibu. And then you're simply going to take about a quarter cup of the pineapple. All righty. So you know what happens. Then you gotta get out your blender. I would love to know which could use my blender. All right, so into the blender will go two ounces of coconut milk, two ounces of pineapple juice, two ounces of white rum, and one ounce of Malibu. And we will put that on. And just blend it up. Have your two glass ready. Here somewhere, I just can't find it. Okay, so once it's mixed, you're going to take your cottontail glass and pour it in. And then, of course, we can't be finished there, we gotta make it even cuter. You're gonna take marshmallows, okay? You're gonna take your marshmallow and you're gonna cut a little indent in and then put it right on the glass. And there you go. There is your cottontail colada. Mm. Okay, it's delicious. Again, personally, I think the recipe calls for way too much coconut milk. Between the coconut on the rim and the coconut, I would add more pineapple. So for that, I'm gonna up the pineapple. I'm gonna go type it, add it to, I'm gonna, fix my recipe up since I didn't make it yet and send it to you guys. And I'm going to add um, a half a cup of pineapple and that would be a half a cup of frozen or half a cup of fresh. And if you have pineapple juice, then keep it at a quarter of a cup. Okay, so that's your one way. The other way would be very simple, just in a cocktail shaker. Let's do two ounces of white or Blanco tequila. A little splash for me. 
All right, one ounce of plain triple sec. If you don't have triple sec, of course, we can go with Contro, Contro or Grand Marnier, and that's one ounce, so two ounces of tequila to one ounce of triple sec. And then for this one, we're gonna use the coconut milk, not the coconut cream. All right, so in there is going to do, I'm just doing like a tablespoon. All right, and then, um, oh, I have to use the blender because I don't have fresh pineapple juice. There you go. So let's bring our blender back. Quite all right that it's the same because it's just us. All right. So for the tequila, we have our, oops, one more option. Forgot about that. Almost had everything out of the fridge. For the tequila mixture, you're going to do two ounces of white Blanco tequila, one ounce of triple sec, um, it says two ounces of coconut milk, I'd start with one, and one ounce of pineapple juice, and then two tables, uh, one tablespoon of lime juice if it's bottled, uh, a, about a half of fresh lime if it's not bottled juice, and then put that in your blender. Let's do that again. Now, realizing what I did to make this one and why I thought it was um, too coconutty, I did in fact use the coconut cream. We don't want to use the coconut cream. If you use the coconut cream, you put basically the littlest teaspoon, not a whole two ounces like I did. Um, you can use the cream to dip and make the, uh, and make the glass out of, but basically, I really prefer the coconut milk, not the cream. Okay, so we're gonna do this again into our coconut cream. I knew taking two different types of coconut milk out would confuse me. All right, so you rim your glass and take it in the fresh, sorry, not the fresh, the shredded flakes. Take your claw. Oh, here's another option. I always thought when I was little, the bunnies were pink. So if you want to take some food dye and put one drop per drink, or like two to three per pitcher and make it pink flavored, I mean colored. Like the pink bunny and the boy in the Christmas story. Okay, Kelly. All right, so this one is a pink cottontail bunny. I like this color better. And that's a special especially if you're using fresh pineapple like I had to instead of the canned pineapple juice. Um, it might turn the drink a little yellow, so adding a tiny bit of food dye will give you a cute drink, and it will also look adorable for Easter. So there we have our pink cottontail bunny, margarita. Mm. Okay, I guess I just like to kill more because that one is excellent. And once again, I will... Just adjust these recipes a tiny bit, and I have them ready to throw them up for you. So we have our cottontail coladas and our cottontail margaritas. Hopefully somebody will come down and drink with me so I don't have to drink two of them. And don't worry, my marshmallows were a little bit old, if you want to say. But I still used it for the presentation because it's adorable. All right, so that's your Easter cocktail. Have it tonight, have it tomorrow. And now we are going to move on. I wanted to show you something really quick. Um, this was a recipe I was going to do just when it was nice out the other day. Wasn't thinking this for Easter, but if you're going to bother to open up and purchase coconut milk and actually have some pineapple, um, I was also thinking two things. Um, for this little pineapple, little party cocktail thing. Um, I would use the, you can use coconut cream or coconut milk. Again, you can use the shredded or the flaked coconut. Um, you can use fresh pineapple, of course, is best. But if you only have frozen, just put it in a, in a strainer over a bowl and let it drain. Um, same thing with, with 
canned, you would dump the pineapple out, save the liquid, you can use it in your drink. And um, even if you don't make the, the drink and the, the thing on the same day, you'll still have pineapple, all right? Pineapple juice to make your drink out of. So we are going to simply take our coconut milk, all right? And I have a bowl that is not wide, it's more taller than wide. And we are going to take our pineapple. Oh no, first we're gonna take our cherry. So you can do this in spears if you want, and then roll the pineapple in the coconut milk and then roll it in the shred and you'd have a pineapple spear. But we're gonna do it this way because I think it's cuter. We're gonna take one of our horrible red dye maraschino cherries and we're gonna, and these are called pina colada bites. This is just another thing to do if you have all of the stuff that you've already purchased for this drink. And then you're just gonna dip it halfway in the coconut and then you're just gonna dip it in the flakes. You see, you have fun little parties. So in summer, think of this when it starts to get nice out. God forbid we're still stuck inside. You can have a fun party for yourself outside. All right, and again, if you were gonna do this with spears, of course, you know I have the shorter spears. I don't have the long spears, but same thing, same process. These are almost like, these remind me of like banana pops. I'm sure you could do it if you have frozen banana. This would be great too. So you would put it, put your coconut cream in a long container and you get it all covered. I'm not gonna cover it all because no one's gonna eat it right now. All right, so same concept, just different presentation. I think the cocktail cutie, the, the colada cuties, that's what I call them, are cuter with, um, of course you can do a toothpick. You don't have to waste a big skewer. A toothpick with a cherry and the pineapple, dip in coconut milk or cream, and I actually dip this in milk and it's staying really well. So don't buy the coconut cream if you don't have to. And here is just the, the colada. Uh, again, this would be a great thing to put on the side of a pina colada. All right, so that's, that's yet another, look at all of these treats. All right, so we have colada cuties. We have cottontail coladas. We have cottontail margaritas, which is what I'm drinking, the pink. Mm. And you might want to get ready to serve them with a straw so people, if they don't like the coconut, they can still drink it and enjoy it. Um, let's see. The other thing I wanted to talk about is I did talk about on Wednesday, I talked about making potato pancakes. I didn't get to make them. We actually ordered out fish fry, but I thought I'd show you really quick. Um, my sister is really the, the one that does this, but you take one egg in a big bowl. This was actually the bowl my mom used to make potato pancakes. And you crack one egg, which I did already. And then um, you grate the potatoes. So the best, I just wanted to talk about it because I did go to the bother of printing the recipes and I never, I never sent it to you guys, so. Very quickly, it would be four large Yukon Gold. Yukon Gold is the best, they're the starchiest. If you don't have Yukon Gold, like I didn't, secondly, they recommend using, I'm sorry, let me start that over. Hi, Karen, hi, Holly, hi, Heather, hi, Christina. Let me start that over, potato pancakes. Okay, this is the bowl. <laughs> Crack one egg and whisk. Not very long, just until it's incorporated. Then you're going to take four large russet, russet potatoes. They are the best because they are the starchiest and they will hold their shape when you fry them. Um, I only have Yukon Gold potatoes. Those are the second best. After that, I have no idea what to use. So you just peel them quick. Let's get this started. So about four large russet would be about two pounds. So this is a recipe for two pounds. Um, like my grandmother would say, I would say, well, write it down for me. She'd say, oh, you know, you just take a little of this and a little of that. So we just grate right into the bowl on the largest grater. All right. Oh, I did screw up. Now Robin's going to tell me what I did. First, grate your potatoes before the egg because you're going to want all of that liquid. You're going to want to press that liquid out. I like to take these 
rags that I have for the, for the kitchen. And um, you just take a dish towel and you keep pressing the liquid out. I should just watch, look at my notes. Okay, so my sister and I like to use the large grater. This is the way my Graham did it and hers were the best. Um, I did try a food processor once. I don't know why I, I, they didn't come out good. Maybe you have better luck. Please put that down. If you do have better luck, tell us that it's okay to use a food processor. I didn't, I didn't know. So we are just going to pretend that I drained all the water out of these. Um, if you use Yukon Gold, they definitely will be creamier than the russet, but the russet are the gold standard in making potato pancakes. And again, if you're making latkes, you would sub out the potatoes for matzo. All right, some people, I think Amy from Texas was saying she does hers with bacon. Robin says, I was going to tell you that. Great out, great without the egg in. Yes, I screwed up, so I'm just gonna do it this way because it's okay. I don't know that anyone's eating them. Holly says, Holly White says, I always use a food processor and I shred them. Okay, well maybe it was just something else I did that day, like put the egg in first. Hi Mary. Happy Saturday, Mary Waddell. Um, all right, so we're gonna get all of our potatoes grated. And that's that. I throw away the littlest because I don't want to cut my fingers. All right, so for lack of, um, after you grate your four large russet or your two pounds of Yukon Gold, then you're gonna let them sit for a while. When they sit, they're gonna release liquid. If you didn't want to make them right away, but you wanted to grate them in the morning, say people were coming over, then you would do the whole process, grate them, let them sit, and then when um, you're ready, three to four hours later, I would put a wet dishcloth over. And don't worry, I wrote this all down, so it is in order when, it's, when you see it on the um, website. Um, after you do that, you're gonna press and drain the liquid out, then you're gonna add your egg and your flour and your salt um, and your onion. So next thing we do, take a spatula, take whatever, to get all the onion, minced onion and the minced juice out, all right? Next, you're going to do for four pounds, you're gonna do about one teaspoon of salt. All right. I don't think it matters what kind of salt you use. I'm using Himalayan, I'm sure sea salt, table salt. I'm sure anything would be fine. Mm. So let's hear from people and see what is everybody having tomorrow. Okay. Now, I'm gonna turn the camera so I can get my oil started. nice and hot. Now for this, I personally wouldn't use a um, nonstick, not important. I would use a pan that can take the heat. Um, you're going to use for two pounds, you're going to use about two cups of oil. Um, don't put two cups of oil in your pan all at once. What you want to do is you just want to get about a quarter of an inch on the bottom of the pan. All right, I'm gonna move my, while that's heating, don't you just love this? Okay, I'm gonna continue grating so I can actually make these for real. Um, I'm letting them sit before I add the flour. Still have to add flour. I'm gonna pretend like I drained them. All right, and what is everybody having for Easter? Let's type that before. We are having kibasi and and then we're gonna have just kibasi and pierogies, but we're gonna try for the first time ever, Jane and I are going to do our homemade pierogies. All right, and let's talk about 
haven't made pierogi. So if anybody has a great recipe, please post that on the comments. So you see, it really doesn't take that long to grate potatoes, unless I'm just that good at it. All right, and one more. Now my egg, was actually just a large egg. Most of the time we have extra large or jumbo in the house, but pickings were slim, so I grabbed whatever I could. I still haven't gone to the grocery store. I was able to do an Instacart Costco order. I was up at three in the morning Thursday, and I got a time slot, but they said they were coming on Wednesday, so on Monday I was going to add, and they came today with, a, with whatever I ordered. I wound up with Doritos. I didn't ask for Doritos. They're happy. Kids are happy. All right, so let's say we've got four russet or two pounds of potatoes in there. And then, all right, now this is, this is the bad part because I do not have regular flour in the house. I only have almond flour. So this could be a real absolute wash or it could come out great, don't know. But so far all I've wasted is half an onion, four potatoes, half an onion, four potatoes, one egg and a teaspoon of salt. All right. So by not draining the liquid out, they just might be a little bit more mushier. Um, there was one other thing, I can't remember. Um, one way of doing it, you would get very fluffy potato pancakes. We just happen to like crisp and thin, almost like a treat. And um, let's see what else, while, the, while it's heating. You can, if you're making a lot of these and you're not ready to eat them, say you were making them at four and you wanted to serve them at six, keep your oven on 200. Um, if you have a wire rack, great. If not, crumple some aluminum, put it on the sheet pan. And as you make them, put them, drain them on a paper towel for like five, 10 minutes and then transfer them to the pan. And just keep doing that as you're making them. So I'm gonna start with two tablespoons of flour to my four potatoes and my one egg and my one teaspoon of salt. Now you can use pepper at this point. I'm not going to. I'm just, I don't know. I just don't want pepper in my potatoes. Okay, so that's it. That's what they look like for me. Again, that's what they look like for me because I'm not using, um, all right, that oil is nice and hot. I'm not using the whole pound. Then you would just want once you put the mound, so for cocktail size, I'm just working with a, a tablespoon, about that much. Once you put the mound in, then just flatten it with the back of the spoon. All right, now once they start to brown on the side, then you're gonna wanna flip them. So let me get a paper towel. And a plate. And you're just going to drain them on that. And then let's talk about what we serve them with. Um, for a, for regular, just for tonight, for Saturday, since it's not a party, we are just going to um, serve them with our sour cream and our applesauce. Um, little trick is no one in the house but me eats the applesauce. So I actually get the little containers of applesauce. I think there's six to a little container. And whenever we're having pork chop or potato pancakes, then I have fresh little applesauce because if I buy the, the big one, even if it's the same price as that, I know I wind up throwing it away. All right, so now two minutes later, they're brown. Just do one flip. Okay. Sit at the table at my grandmother's house and she would just dole them out hot and hot and oily right off, greasy off the pan. Um, I don't worry about adding a lot of salt to, re I don't worry about adding a lot of salt to the mixture because once they do come out, just like french fries, when french fries come out of the grease, they add, that's when 
McDonald's would salt them. So once they come out of the grease, you could lightly, see, just a sprinkle, lightly salt them. And then a dollop of sour cream, a dollop of applesauce, or both if you're like us, would be excellent. Um, let's see, Robin's making prime rib, ham, pierogies, cabanosa, shrimp cocktail. Oh God, I wish I could go to her house. Hello, Melissa. Okay, so um, the other idea, of course, for a cocktail party is make them really bite sized and put a tiny dollop of sour cream and a tiny dollop of um, fresh caviar. Not fresh caviar, caviar, they sell it at Wegmans pretty cheap. As far as caviar goes, it, you know, it's not the best, but it would be really cute. Um, also smoked salmon. I, I tried to get that added to my order. They couldn't order it, but smoked salmon with sour cream would be beautiful. Um, some people like green onions on the in the batter. I like them on top. And that's about it. So happy Easter. I hope you enjoyed today's cocktail. And I hope you have a blessed, lovely Sunday for those celebrating. For if you're not, just have a great Sunday. Enjoy your cocktail, and we will see you soon. Bye.